lose control Does he even know you're here? Nobody knows I just keep it in my head I don't say too much Yes, yes, it's the Heat Serious XM. I mean, say what? You're in Mina's house. In the house tonight, we have Ro Timmy. Yeah, what up, Yeah, though? Ro Timmy. How are you? I'm good. I haven't seen you in so long. It's been a minute, man. Me and Ro Timmy are from the same area, yes, part yes. of the world. Yeah, yeah. So Jersey. It, Jersey, exactly. Yeah. It's funny. I was watching one of our old interviews where I brought you back to your high, high school. school. Do you remember that? Yeah, that was what, 2016? It was long. No, it was before that. 15. 15. You had just got on power. So when was oh, that? So maybe early 15. 15, that's yeah. when it was. Wow. Remember that? That's crazy, yeah. And then his neighbor popped up on us, and he's like, <laughs> he used to be a, a shy, quiet, quiet kid. kid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he used to study all the time. Yeah, when I was in third grade, yes, I was a beast. <laughs> yes. And now you're naked on the Instagram all the time. <laughs> <clears throat> all right, all right. My mama is still watching, so I don't, you got to watch what you say. <laughs> Road to me, congratulations, man. Number one R&B album when you dropped it, Walk thank With you. Me. That's thank amazing. You. Can you. we clap? Thank There's you. like yeah. five people here. We're clapping. It's all good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how's everything been? It's fine, man. I'm happy. I'm enjoying life. It's a it's a place where you want to just keep going and keep growing as a person and as an artist and as an actor. Yeah. You know, so it's a, it's a good place to be. Yeah. Your album is very sexy. Uh -uh. It has like a little vibe, you know, like you. it has like a Afrobeat kind of R&B pop. Thank you. Fusion. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, I really, really loved it. Well, we wanted to make a project that had a vibe that was mixed with Akon, mixed with myself, mixed with Craig David. Oh wow! Yeah, so that was the that was the thought process behind it because I kind of represent both sides where everything is melodic, but there's a twang in my voice and how I say things. Yeah. So we wanted we wanted it digestible to people, so everything turned out really well. When the album went number one, how'd you celebrate? I, you know what the funny thing <laughs> is, I was actually on set. Shut up. Finishing season six, I'm like everything, and and I got the text message like. Wow, you just went number one, but I just finished rapping my last scene on the show, and it right. was like, I, how do I? react right now everybody's staring at me so it was a uh, it was just god kind of saying you know what new beginnings and new things to come yeah i know just from knowing you um that you your first love was music yeah you were always an artist since you were a kid yeah you know um the the reason you even you know got into acting was because you needed to make some, some money. money for, for music right right <laughs> yeah, right yeah, yeah. and then you met 50 and he signed you to g unit no no i, I got on power first right you, right 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 yeah, yeah, you got yeah. on power yeah. you were acting and yeah. then you met 50 and that's and then the music people think that the music came after the acting yeah but it's actually the opposite it's the opposite you know when i was a kid man i, I played every instrument i played the violin right. the piano everything you know and so i was in a gospel choir i, I won the apollo theater twice when i was 16 yeah. so Music was everything that I always wanted to do. When I was in college, I was always touring around other colleges as an artist. And then when I graduated, we basically had no more money. Right. So then I went in for my first audition, but I thought it was a commercial. <laughs> it ended up being a major role on a TV show called Boss. Yeah. So I ended up booking it. So now I'm, I'm an actor. Right, right. You know, I had to learn everything on the go. So I had to kind of take a break from music. So now when you actually have this hit song and yeah. an album, do yeah. people still try to put you in that box because they don't know the history? Uh, I think people are educating themselves now. You know, I think the show put a platform for me where they're like, who is this guy? Yeah. And they're doing a research and everything is now happening simultaneously that it's like, okay, it's making sense. Like, oh, that's his song. I love that song. So now it becomes, wow, he's just really talented. So it's changing the narrative of how everything's turning out. All right. So Timmy's going to be performing today to let y'all know what it is. So tell us about Decisions. So Decisions is actually the first record off the project that we did. You know, I met up with Harmony Samuels, and this was the first, like, studio session we did, and it kind of went crazy to kind of set the tone of what the whole project will be. Ro Timmy is here. So me and Ro go back, 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 back. We were just talking about that mm -hmm. so long. And so long. I'm so proud of you. Like, Thank you. I can't even imagine how your parents feel. Oh, they're so happy, man. I saw them yesterday, and they just keep saying, like, wow. Like, my mom knew this. You know, when, my, when I was in my mom's womb, she knew, like, I was supposed to do music. <laughs> really? I swear. She was oh, like. Oh, that means he was acting up in there. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, nah, like, my, your son, so her son, her son is supposed to finish the legacy of Bob Marley. That's wow. what my mom received when I was a kid, you know, when I was in the womb. So as soon as I got out, she was just like, all right, 
whatever it is musically you want to do, we're doing it. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Yeah. And your parents are Nigerian. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mo normally, like, you know, Nigerians, just for me, knowing so many Nigerians, your parents yeah. want you to be very, like, you're going to be a doctor, yeah. you're going to be a lawyer. Yeah, doctor, that lawyer. I wrote to me after <laughs> I was like, oh, really? <laughs> but they were supportive from day one. And my mom was my first manager, you know? So she had me singing. Shut up, I didn't know that. She was my first manager. She had this little Nigerian woman <laughs> was in the freaking hood. You better Music. Yes. Wait, do it in her voice. I wrote to me, wrote to me, go on stage and show them what you are made of now. I'm like, okay, all right, all right. You know, and I was a wedding singer, so she was collecting all the little dollars that I was I remember that. Yeah, yeah. You told me that. Yeah, I dope. didn't know your mom was your manager, though. At first, yeah, from age four to 12. Shut up. Yeah. Yeah. That must have been hard, though. Like, you yeah. know, having your mom manage you, like yeah. business and personal. Yeah, it was tough because she wanted to show love. But she knew what she had given birth to. Yeah. So she always wanted to just continue to just push through and make me just think beyond being her son, you right. know. And so for a parent to say, you know what, don't go to school Monday, Tuesday, let's go do the Apollo Theater. You know, that that kind of showed me, you know, where she was. Like Vision. Mentally. Yeah, her vision was different. Yeah. Yeah. You still drive the Jeep? I know you love some Jeeps. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I got, I got rid of the Jeep. Oh, I got what rid you of got Jeep. now? I ain't got nothing, man. Nothing. You don't have a car? No, no. I, I mean, I mean, I was just in New York for so long. I need, what I need a car for? But don't you, you don't live in L.A.? No, no, no. no. Oh, okay. Nah, I live in L.A. I just moved to Atlanta. Oh, you live in Atlanta. Yeah, you yeah. still need a car in Atlanta. Well, I just moved to Atlanta. Oh, okay. I was living in New York, so we had the driver and everything. So, How long are your days, like, between making music and then the acting thing? <sighs> I don't sleep. You know, for a good month when we made Walk With Me, it was literally on set filming this power uh, season, maybe uh, 8 a.m. to 9 p.m., and then studio from 10.30 p.m. to 9 a.m. I did that crazy. for a month. So I didn't sleep. It was just like... How bad do you want this role? And, right. You know, and so everything started happening after that. Have you been back to Nigeria? No, I haven't been back in uh, nine years. So I'm going back November 16th. Yo, when you go back, do you understand how crazy it's going to be over there? It's already starting to happen. Now. Really? Yeah, how already, do you know? The conversation, Instagram, social media, email, everything <laughs> is like, yo, we're waiting, we're waiting for you to get here. Yeah. yeah. Who are you, some of your favorite like Nigerian artists? My favorite Nigerian artists? Because uh, Afrobeat right now is very commercial. Yeah, yeah, he's not, he's like. not Nigerian, though. Oh, yeah, who he's is African. It? He's African, but I feel like uh, Wizkid. I like Wizkid. Only you know, I have a, I have a deep love for Wizkid because he's the first one to put me on a tour. Mm. In 2011, he put me on his tour with him. You know, and so he saw something that I probably didn't even see in myself at that time. So I'm forever loyal to to Wiz. So I, I I definitely say Wiz, and mm. I like Burner too. I love Burner Boy. Yeah, that Yay song? Yeah, it's crazy. Fire. Yeah, yeah it's crazy. Fire. Well, yeah. Bro Timmy's here. He's performing. So tell us about I Can't Blame You. I Can't Blame You, man. It was a, it was a, it was, actually came about from a conversation in the studio about my lifestyle, not understanding why, you know, someone would leave me in the situation that I'm in because it's so strenuous, so busy. I'm always on the road. So I can't blame you if you leave. You know, I really can't at this point in my life. So... That's kind of was a conversation that we had, and and it just turned into lyrics, man.